Far from the reckless, necklace monstrosity that Warner Brothers uses to move their cartoon plots along, the real Tasmanian devil is a semi-cute mongoose pig that will eat anything that comes across its path. From its brutal and competitive birth to its habit of sumo wrestling its neighbors for food, this little carnivore lives the austere, battle-hardened life of a Viking or Spartan. But ferocity and selfishness seem to go a long way when it comes to surviving in the wilds of Tasmania here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie and Michelle for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, uh, type in Cassie Michelle on YouTube. Uh, and today we're talking about the devil down under and his horrifying nighttime death screams. But not in Georgia. No, I was. I almost wrote, we're, gonna, we're talking about when the devil got sick of going down to Georgia and then went down under. But that was a, too much of a mouthful. That still kind of works. It doesn't work as a nickname, but... No, I mean as an intro to the... And today we're talking about kind of situation. But speaking but of I, nicknames... I, yeah. We're going to call... We're, we're, oh, I mean, what are we talking about? I don't even think we mentioned that. We're talking about the Tasmanian Diablo. The Tasmanian devil. Yeah, and it's not... Uh, Willem Dafoe's character in that one movie where he hunts Tasmanian tigers. I guess he would be the Tasmanian devil to them. <laughs> but we're going to call the Tasmanian devil here the Luciferian Leonidas. Which I'll talk about later. They have a very Spartan lifestyle. Uh, the scruffy little meat weasel. And Beelzebite. Ah, nice. Okay. Oh, we'll talk about the description later. But yeah, taxonomize this for us, Captain. Marsupials above. <laughs> oh, <laughs> marsupials will bite. Oh, put it all uh. together. <laughs> and what do you got, uh. bippity boppity boo? <laughs> well, it's in the kingdom you know, love, and are in the kingdom Animalia. The phylum is Chordata because we're, you know, back to our roots. Back. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the class is Mammalia because I'm back to my roots. Oh, no, this is your this animal. Is my You're animal. the mammal man I'm now. Doing, I'm not, not now. I'm just dipped. I just dip my toe into your territory every once in a while. It's in a very particular infra class, which we don't usually talk about, but you'll understand it. It's Marsupiala, which is pouch boys. And there's well, a lot ladies, really. of them in Australia. Yeah, and apparently it's be the theory is that because Australia is a big island... And islands tend to have weirder, more offbeat isolationists in terms of adaptation and evolution. That these marsupials just kind of thrived in 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 a situation like marsupials may be an older style of class that gave way to new, more like got competed out and. That's why you don't really see them anywhere except for possums in North America for some reason. Yeah. Um, opossums. Or no, wait, no. Yeah. It's opossum, yeah, but it's I, I feel like possum has become so commonplace that it's accepted. Yeah, there used to be megafauna, apparently, on in Australia. But they all died out, and so now there's just marsupials and dingles. Dingoes. Dingles, <laughs> dingles yeah. And, and platypi. <laughs> Platypuses. Uh, the... The in for or the regular the order is uh Deciromorpha. Deciromorpha. Yeah. Yeah. And then the family is Deciridae. And the genus is Sarcophilus. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Sarcophilus. Uh and then the species is Harisi. Harisii. Sarcophilus Harisi. Sarcophilus Harisi, sorry. Sarcophilus Harisi heresy <laughs> <laughs> wow it is just the devil <laughs> it's, sarc sarcophilus it's a vampire devil mephistopheles heresy <laughs> mr mistopheles i'm surprised isn't mistopheles no mephistopheles 
One of these, Mr. Pestopolis one of, is a jellical cat. One of these things is the name of the demon that, uh, that, uh, that in in the play Doctor Faustus, the demon that promises him eternal knowledge or something. I was I when I when I first did this, uh, I was writing in the um, taxonomy. I automatically put carnivora, but apparently not. <laughs> Apparently, mammals that are distinctly carnivorous can also not be in the order Carnivora. This is in the order Dasyermorphia or something like that. Carnivora is just an order of like some some carnivores. Carniv- uh, carnivorous mammals are in the order Carnivora, but a yeah, large portion of carnivores are outside of that order. Yeah, because carnivora can't carnivore. As soon as you eat meat, you're a carnivore. Well, I think it's you know, I, there. There's, there's like standards for the percentage of an animal's diet that consists of meat. So you're not really considered a, a carnivore over an omnivore if your diet is, like a certain percentage of meat. Although bears are in carnivora and they eat a heck of a lot of plants and. Yeah, stuff. but they most like the the majority of their pre hibernation diet is salmon. Right. Well, at least grizzly bears so they eat a ton of meat and they just subsist on on b- berries and roots and plants until then and also the occasional hiker anyway since we're in the business of naming things it's time for cr- no naughty nomenclature is that what we called it Naughty? What did we call it? Nitty gritty <laughs> nomenclature. Nitty gritty nomenclature. You <laughs> started with an N and I put in naughty. It's the devil, so, you know. Nitty gritty nomenclature. <laughs> the part of the show where when there is no uh, term of venery or collective noun for an animal, we, tr- uh, I ask you, Joe, a question. That question is this, <laughs> the same every time. Uh, what... How, uh, how do you define the, or how do you translate the uh, binomial nomenclature, sarcophilus heresy, heresy? Um, because these guys are lone wolves, there really isn't a term of venery for them. I did find one from a, a zoologist, like a suggestion, so, but I decided this was better. So, Joe, sarcophilus heresy, or heresy, what does it mean? Does it mean, A, screeching furry one, B, furry death lover, C, tiny death bringer, or D, Harris's meat lover? <laughs> Harris's meat lover, final answer. Ding, ding, ding. You're correct. How did you yeah, know? Yeah, I figured, like... You know, hair seems like a European that would be, you know, traipsing around Australia looking for things to name after himself. I thought that would throw you off because it seems so obvious that I would just take that person's name and throw it into a the thing. And also sar- sarcophilus and sarcophagus. I would thought I'd throw you off with the death concept. But no, you you could not be uh, you could not be hoodwinked. It, it, it was almost as if Harris is. Uh, meat lover just kind of threw all those other ones out. It pushed them out of my mind. I was hoping that H- Harris just sounds like a uh, imperialist, you know, a, a guy who just went to Australia, started pointing at things, and said, "That's Harris. That's Harris. That's Harris. <laughs> that's Harris's kangaroo. That's Harris's platypus. That's Harris's tree, and that's Harris's meat lover." The person standing there with a slice of delicious Papa John's pe- meat lover pizza was like, "No, that this is my meat lover." <laughs> <laughs> what? No, it's mine. I paid for it. Not that meat lover. Oh, I'm so hungry. That meat lover. <laughs> There's a really loud animal in the bushes just destroying a carcass. But speaking of carcass, would you like to hear what this thing sounds looks like? Um. Yeah. Both. If you got it. Okay, so the Tasmanian Devil looks like a little black bear with a big rat head and a weasel's fluffy tail. Oh wait, it doesn't look like a uh, uh, a brown furry 
thing with a giant mouth and no distinct head or neck and that spins around in tornadoes and um, can either clean or destroy things? No, that thing, I like that the Tasmanian devil, like just has a body face. Yeah, he's like SpongeBob. <laughs> he's just a, just one thing. But it, the but they, Taz looks absolutely nothing like a real Tasmanian. Except devil. for that, like fluffy tail, kind of looks like their tails. Sure, I mean, I guess it it, it also looks like a dog's tail, or you know, it's it. They just said, "Oh, it's a mammal, right?" Somebody said the, the, the Tasmanian devil's a mammal, so we're gonna go with this. But the Tasmanian devil cartoon is at least like loud and chaotic just like a regular taz would be but all the other looney tunes just they 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 hit the mark a lot closer even even coyote looks more like a coyote and they're all bipedal uh but tasmanian devils are mostly black not light brown uh with a patch of white that runs along their chest and one that runs along their butts above the tail these little devils have large heads with jaws to match. Their gaping maws look like they were who the inventor of the club sandwich was cooking for when they came up with that unwieldy lunch. Because it's because it can lock in. It's a stacked sandwich. And you need to be able to open your mouth like a Tasmanian devil to be able to eat that. Got thing. an unhinged jaw. Yeah, what? Who did this? You gotta really, you gotta mush it down. Is what you need to do. Put a lot of mayo on it so it mushes well, and then mush it. That's how you (laughs) eat a club sandwich. I always uh, separated the breads. What? I I, like. I would reconstruct it into two sandwiches. No, I would always just mash it down. I mean, I still, I'll just turn it into something that fits in my mouth, and then eat it because it tastes the same. Uh, they all look like, um, they could fit in with raccoons or rodents, but of course, like many Australian mammals, they are in the pouch gang. The marsupials. Yeah. I said they look like little bears. So that means we have to talk about size in relatable terms. So welcome to the beloved the measure up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show. The part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio of yourself saying, singing, or chittering. The words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We do have a new intro from our friend, the wizard Gandalf. Yes. He actually sent this in a while ago and just missed it. Uh, but... Uh, he said, hold on, I'm pulling it Wait, up. he, he Rick rolled us once, didn't he? No, that wasn't him. No, yes, it was. Cause remember he, the next time he sent in one and said, sorry, that was from, uh, the evil wizard Saruman. Oh, maybe. Well, this time, as soon as I find it, this is Gandalf the white, right? It doesn't say just it's, the wizard Gandalf, the wizard Gandalf. So yeah, you don't know. Oloran is his spirit name. He said one of the Hobbit boys wanted to share this with you. What is it? Is it uh, Old Toby, the finest weed in the South Farthing? Oh, I hope so, but it's not. Uh, without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. What is it, trusted sidekick? <laughs> Measure up! <laughs> what is happening? I got really scared. <laughs> that, that uh, that's from SpongeBob. I just talked about SpongeBob. I did. Did I invoke? I didn't know him? SpongeBob was a Hobbit. <laughs> did, did we just did we summon SpongeBob to the show by mentioning? We his talked name about SpongeBob times? last episode too. Did we? Well, he's just a he's a very popular cultural icon. He is. And he's also he's the Mickey just, Mouse of the sea. Well, I mean, we had to talk about it last time because he's a sponge. But goodness, that was. Uh, thank you, Gandalf. <laughs> that was a good one. That was, that was a good I, one. I like that a lot. At first, I was like, "This sounds a lot like SpongeBob," but maybe there's just like some really clever editing going on here, like when um, when Brian sent in his and he sounded like a Dragon Ball Z character. I think, don't they say Man Ray after that? 
I uh, the oh, with, the, one of those like Mermaid Man Barnacle Boy episodes. Yeah, yeah. He's the villain, Man Ray, right? Anyway, let's talk about body length. There are 652 millimeters or 25.7 inches. How many Tasmanian devils go into the distance between Tasmania and Australia on the mainland? Huh. This one's tame. Is it? I mean, it's just... I mean, I'm probably not going to get it right, but at least I have a mental picture for the first time in a while. Well, here's a hint. Tasmania is south of Victoria, Australia. Australia is actually made up of six states and ten territories. I'd like to go there someday. I want to dive the Great Barrier Reef before uh, it dies. Um, But that's not in Victoria. I'm going to say 200 miles. I'm just using the distance between Key West and Havana as a as an off the coast island idea, and that's like ninety something miles, I think. Um, yeah, so two hundred miles. This thing's about two feet, so it's about twenty six hundred per mile, and then we'll just add double that. So we're like, oh yeah, so I'll say five. 128,000 Tasmanian devils go into the distance between Tasmania and the mainland. Yes. 528,000. The correct answer is 369,805. Tasmania is 240 kilometers or 150 miles south of Australia. Ah, See? Yeah. At least I was in the same... in the same uh, digit number, you were not. You're only fifty miles off, but that radically changes the number of Tasmanian devils required. Yes, uh, the the. Do you know the name of the strait that separates uh, Tasmania and Australia? The Devil Strait. No, it's the Bass Strait. The Bass. Yeah, that's probably named after some dude. Um, here, let's talk about weight. There are eight kilograms or 18 pounds. How many Tasmanian devils go into the weight of the Arve giant or the Arve giant? A-R-V-E. Here's a hint. A-A-R-V-E. Wait, no, wait. Go ahead. Forget I said anything. In 2019, Tasmania experienced brush fires that took out some of the largest flowering trees in the world. In January of 2019, one of the largest was a tree called the Arv Giant, and it was destroyed. The The tree was a gum tree of the species Eucalyptus globulus. Is that the end of the... Yep. Okay. Uh, the weight of a tree. Yeah, that's tough. I thought I had an advantage here because my son is about 18 pounds right now so i was like ah and i've held him a lot i know exactly what 18 pounds uh feels like but now we're we're talking about how much a tree weighs <laughs> well i'll give you oh, how many um masons go into a tasmanian devil <laughs> one <laughs> one to one <laughs> one to one um uh, i don't know trees i have no idea how much trees weigh especially big ones <laughs> Um, so we'll say, and it's a, it's like the biggest one. I can imagine a tree, a really big, like Banyan-esque tree being like, I don't know, 10 tons. That's just 200,000 pounds. Or sorry, no, it's 20,000 pounds. Oh, I don't know. I'll go, I'll say, sure. I'll say 10 tons. I'm probably, it's way underneath, but that's all I got. Um, and this is 18 pounds, so I'm going to say 1,100 Tasmanian. That can't be right. That cannot be right. I'm going to say 11,000 Tasmanian devils. 11,000, final answer. Mm-hmm. The correct answer was 28,555. Okay, that was... M- <laughs> At first, I was going to say 1,000. So this this... Yeah, my instincts were a little bit... The tree had a mass of about 233 tons with two N's and an E-S, or 257 short tons. 
U.S. tons. Correct tons. It's a big tree. Yeah. For a flowering tree, that's pretty big. Hardwood. This ain't no pine. Let's talk fast facts. Are you ready for some fast facts? Mm-hmm. These little devils, of course, hail from the island of Tasmania. They use that they they used to live on the mainland, but they were pushed out by competition from humans and dingoes. L- likely, that's what that's what the theory is. Mm-hmm. They enjoy the crepuscular and nocturnal lifestyles. Do you remember what cr- crepuscular means? Duskish, duskish, ish. Yeah, they like the 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 uh, waning hours of daylight. Mm-hmm. And then also nighttime. Uh, they prefer to spend their days lounging around in holes and bushes. They do this to avoid predation from large birds of prey and other predators. I've seen some conflicting things about their ability to climb. I've read that juvenile devils may climb trees to escape predation, but adults aren't as confident uh, when it comes to tr- the tree life. Also... It doesn't really make sense because the their biggest predators are like eagles and escaping to a tree doesn't really help Yeah, that. they're the, kind of the apex predators in their food chain. Uh, the but then also, also they have longer forelimbs on average. Uh, and then I've read that that's expressly for the purpose of climbing. So maybe they can climb, maybe they can't. <laughs> they can definitely climb because they yeah. eat like bird eggs and stuff. Uh, so Tasmanian devils are so named because Europeans that came to Tasmania shuddered at the horrifying sounds they made through the night and attributed the sounds to a devil in the dark. Well, they didn't really think it was the devil. They just thought it was a horrifying Maybe they did. animal that they called the devil. Uh, but it is a very small little guy about the size of a baby. <laughs> about the size of an eight-month-old baby. The fact that they're relatively small uh, doesn't stop them from being the largest carnivorous animals on Tasmania. Or mammals, sorry. Marsupials. Uh, There's probably some eagles that are larger. And they're the largest carnivorous marsupials in the world. So your son is the same size as the largest (laughs) carnivore (laughs) in Tasmania. Yeah, thanks to Willem Dafoe's character. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It used to be the thylacin or the Tasmanian tiger, which is a marsup- a canine-looking marsupial. Yeah, you look at a picture that, of that, and it does not look like a marsupial at all. Although it does kind of look like you took a lemur and a coyote and put it together and slapped some tiger stripes on it. It also has the large, gaping maw of a Tasmanian devil. Um, but these little... Uh, carnivores have a bite that lives up to their terror tones. In fact, their bite is the strongest relative to body size among mammals. Yeah, we should have this, included them when we were talking about the jaguar. Jaguar would beat them in a in a utility contest, but in terms of pound for pound. If you shrunk a jaguar, the Tasmanian uh, devil would win. Yeah. Plus, like relative to their body size, their mouth is huge. Um, so the, there's a lot of biting and they, apparently their, their jaw is very similar in shape to, um, a hyena, which is also a strong bite forced mammal. Yeah. They share a lot in common with hyenas. Yeah. Because both of them are able to crunch down on bones with their bite force. But the, the Tasmanian devil uh, leaves no scraps behind when they finish a meal, so they, they crunch down on bones and everything. Swallow it all. Um, I wonder if they can even eat teeth. Because teeth are extremely dense. They definitely can. It's crazy. Uh, despite their death screams and bone-crushing bite, they're relatively mild-mannered and prefer to scavenge meals, but they do become very aggressive and loud when threatened. Uh, though they can bring down prey like small vertebrates and bugs but they're often found along roadways because they take advantage of roadkill they like to scavenge the roadways they often become roadkill that's very true uh they often live solitary lifestyles but they come together around mealtime like uh you and your distant relatives during the holidays and like you and your distant relatives they often don't get along why do they <laughs> Why do they call each other? They they find each other by screaming, 
when one devil finds a meal, he'll scream. I have, and then it alerts everyone. I have a, I, f- I found a theory on that. Okay, uh, I've, uh, um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just stop there and let you take it from there. All right, sure. Yeah, this is the major fact. It's called the, the devil. You know, <laughs> basically, if there were ever sp- an animal in the animal kingdom that you could call a sp- a Spartan from ancient Greece. I, I would probably give that title to the Tasmanian devil. They'd take the cake. They're lone rangers, and they seem to be bred for battle and survival of the fittest. And this starts f- all the way from the instant that they uh, are born. So a female will can give birth to, up, to a litter of up to 30 young, but she only has room to nurse four. Instantly, it's a race to see which four of them will live because those that don't latch will die because they latch for the whole time that they're in the mother's pouch. So if you don't latch, you get the X. Right. Yeah, that doesn't rhyme, but OK. No, it's a slant <laughs> rhyme. Um, sure. I guess the vowel sound. But um, yeah, so up to like 26 young will die like within the first few days of starvation um so they they're born they make their way to the um the place where they can nurse and once they leave the the pouch once they're not joeys anymore because marsupials have joeys um this is after 100 days they start their lives as ravenous meat eaters and they'll eat just about anything they but they most definitely love meat they do hunt, so they'll uh, hunt prey like wombats and wallabies and rabbits and kangaroo joeys and other little marsupials because there are so many different kinds of marsupials like batongs and potaroos, which sounds so Australian. <laughs> um, they will also eat birds and insects and fish and frogs and snakes and lizards and basically the only thing I couldn't find that I... The only thing I could determine that they didn't eat was each other. Um, They also eat vegetable matter and fruits sometimes. And they will... But most of their diet comes from being scavengers. So they're opportunistic um, because they're not very fast. They can't just chase down a rabbit. Uh, So they mainly go for sleeping, weak, old, or injured, or otherwise incapacitated prey, even among the ones I was just talking about, wombats and rabbits and and stuff like that. So they'll also go after livestock, which has been a huge problem for some of the farmers over over the decades, centuries. And in what might be the most horrible thing ever, they will eat the legs of sheep whose feet slip through the wooden planks in their shearing sheds. So, like, a, a sheep will just be, like, will accidentally fall through, and their legs will be dangling down there, and then Tasmanian devils will just eat their legs. Horrible. That is, that's pretty terrible. Um, but they're opp- opportunistic, I guess. And they'll also eat roadkill, and even, like you said, and even buried animals. So, they, they have pretty good sniffers, and they'll find the, they'll find the uh, burial places of, you know, the family horse or dog or sheep or cow or something like that and they will uncover them they'll eat out the intestines and then go into the cavity where the intestines were and that's where they'll sit and eat on eat the rest so because they're not fast they'll also follow other predators to their kills and then just scare them off once they get there uh, because these guys are f- ferocious and they make the worst sounds. The worst sound is probably nails on a chalkboard, uh, Quint style. But uh, this, it's it's there. It, I can see why you would call them devils if you were just sitting outside in the night and you just heard these guys. I mean, it's like if you've ever heard cats doing insane things outside. 
uh, they make some crazy noises, and so do these, so do the Tasmanian devils. So what often happens is uh, a faster predator, like a quoll, which is a um, Australian marsupial I'd never heard of before, uh, it'll make a kill, and a juvenile devil will often come in and scare off the quoll. They'll be the first ones there uh, because they're more crepuscular. They're more active in early dusk where the older ones are active at night. So the unholy sounds of them eating and screeching will attract the older, more mature devils, and the dominant males will scare off the juveniles and eat their fill. And then once they leave, the others can eat. And the sound of a feeding frenzy for these guys can be heard over seven miles away. So a bunch of other devils show up to the party. And like you said, it's like they're lone rangers. They don't really care for other members of their species. Why are they calling others uh, to them? And what all, what I could find was that they are they don't want any of it to go to waste. So they're trying to uh, conserve energy and not have to drag it anywhere and just have the whole thing be done and gone. Which seems that doesn't make any sense. It seems sense. odd, like odd. Uh, I don't know environmental behavior for for these um, little terrors, but that's I mean, like yeah. Why why wouldn't they just gorge themselves, drag the rest of it to their den, and then just have that be what they eat? They're apparently not sensitive. wanting it to go to waste. Do, is not a thing that doesn't. Like, I know nothing about, you know, ecology, and I reject that. <laughs> I'm confident in rejecting that theory. They're, um, they're pretty apparently pretty sensitive to rot. So after a certain amount of time, I guess it's more problematic for them to eat. They're scavengers that are sensitive to rot? I guess. It seems like, hold on, let me, let me find what... Uh, I, my theory was that they're, well, a, a, they're just aggressive when it comes to like certain situations. So maybe the act of, and like every time they get in a fight, they make a lot of noise. So maybe just the act of devouring something triggers that instinct to, you know, make noise and growl and stuff like that. And that just attracts all the other ones. Oh, this is this is from famed researchers um, Owen and Pemberton. You know those guys, classic guys that researched the Tasmanian devil. I mean, it, it says that um, so the it can it can often be heard several kilometers away. It has been interpreted as notifications to colleagues to share in the meal so that food is not wasted by rot and energy is saved. The amount of noise is correlated to the size of the carcass. So the bigger the f- the bigger the animal, the more noise they make. Because and so that's I get I guess what's giving them the idea that they're like, hey, we need more mouths. But I mean, there's another theory that I have <laughs> that you know it's easier to pull things apart when you when when there's another anchor point. Yeah, I guess. But then again, if you have this crunching jaw, maybe you don't even need that. Yeah, you just you just rip right through it. And then the, maybe maybe there's just like strength in numbers and eating is vulnerable because you're like in one place and you got your head buried in something. But these guys are like honey badgers. They don't they don't back down. Except to yeah, bigger I mean, an, versions an, an, of themselves. An eagle that's like twice your size with knives for feet <laughs> can kill you in an instant. So I guess. Well, multiple eyes, multiple jaws. You did mention that they're about their jaw strength. It's actually twelve hundred pounds per square inch. Um, so, when they g- get into this feeding frenzy, nothing is left. They eat the bones and definitely the teeth. Um, all of it is gone. And so, to a degree, farmers like them as scavengers, since animals that die of other causes are. Uh, disposed of before disease and flies take hold. They're like land piranhas. But like, 
I, w I still wouldn't want them around because they <laughs> they'll feed on the young of your livestock and eat all your sheep's feet. Yeah. So that's not good. Um, and just how opportunistic they are and what a nuisance they've been to farmers is led to like their population fluctuating rapidly because for fluctuating as in going up and down yeah because it, it was going down for a while as farmers were just outright killing them kind of like the ethiopian wolf except the ethiopian wolf doesn't deserve it um but then there was like a conservation effort after the tasmanian tiger went extinct and then their population started to go back up and now there's some sort of chemically based cancer that's spreading throughout the um, Tasmanian devils that is lowering their, uh, that, that's put them into the endangered vulnerability or conservation status. So despite being ferocious animals that eat pretty much everything, they're still on their way out. But they have the ability to bite themselves out of metal traps. So that was the problem, is that you, they would trap them, and then they would just escape. Uh, so it was like, well, I guess we just have to kill them. So that's part of why that happened. And Australia has, if you've listened to our emu episode, they have a storied history when it comes with to farmers dealing with uh, local the local fauna. And uh, <laughs> it's it's worth checking out because they haven't been very good at it. It's kind of, it's kind of been a disaster for om almost every time. Um, but yeah, go check out our emu episode. I don't remember which number it was, but um, it's pretty good. The Australian government versus a, f a, a herd of emu. So the Tasmanian devil will also f they'll also fight each other during these um, feeding frenzies. So yeah, that's probably why it's uh, so loud. Um, uh, which also just lends to the like. Why are you gonna call all of your friends and then just try to kill them if they when they get close to your food? Because you want to be uh, considerate about waste and energy conservation, um, but you also want you you want what's yours, and you'll kill anyone who gets in the way. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bit a bit of uh, ludo narrative mm -hmm. dissonance there, but. Um, it, it works in their minds. It's justified in their minds. So they'll sometimes bite and scratch each other, um, but they will apparently also stand up on their haunches and push each other with their paws. Adorable. Adorable. Like little sumo wrestlers or 80s bullies. <laughs> we were just talking about uh, the Karate Kid before re recording, and there's a lot of pushing that happens in the beginning. So I just imagine now a Tasmanian devil doing this. But that's all I got. They live a brutal existence, life from start to finish, and um, they, I, I mean, they, they could be classified as as cute, especially as as little yeah. little ones. Adults, I wouldn't. They're just kind of giant rats. Like what they have, their long forelimbs give them this kind of cute little waddle run. But they kind of have like. They have the short snouts make them look like little pig rats. Also, <laughs> uh, this is a, just a, a random fact, but they store almost all their fat in their tail huh. instead of in their body. So they're actually really muscular. Uh, you, they said that you could tell an older um, Tasmanian devil by the fact that he's covered in scars from like every meal getting bloodied. Yeah. Again, that's why I, I like I imagine that these are the Greek, Greek Spartans, or uh, not the Greek Spartans. That's that's not true because <laughs> the Greeks, they, the Spartans fought the Greeks. Um, but uh, yeah, the the Spartans of old, they they just they just lived to battle and, and and feast. They're like Vikings, actually. They're they're like Vikings because not only are they bred for battle but they also just take other people's stuff <laughs> all right that's all i got <laughs> that's all i got all right that was the tasmanian devil so for you out there in podcastia be nice take turns and keep an eye out for your siblings unlike the tasmanian devil here in life 
death, and taxonomy. Hey, LDT listeners. Thanks for listening to the end of the episode. For your loyalty, you get a shameless self-promotion from us. If you haven't already, leaving a review on your favorite podcast app can really help us grow. But telling your podcast-loving friends about us is even better. Also, don't forget to send in your measure-up intros and animal suggestions to ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We love hearing from you. As always, thanks, most of all, for listening. favorite in the world podcast. <laughs> ah, turn that there on you go. I couldn't find three things that the Tasmanian devil does that uh, anyone should anyone do. Should do. <laughs> Except I guess um share. They do share.